Hi, hi Rachel. So Rachel, hi. Um, you might want to tell the um, uh, listeners um, exactly who you are and why, why you've been interviewed because you wrote this article for our blog called The Kingdom of the Sick and it's obviously touched a uh, raw nerve or gelled with the community because some of the feedback was quite amazing and it made me realize we're missing a trick as a healthcare professional. We are definitely missing a trick. Okay, um, as I said, um, I'm Rachel and I was diagnosed with MS, uh, relapse remitting MS back in 2009. And for the last couple of years, I've been writing about what it is like to have, it, have MS uh, for the blog um, from the point of view of somebody, you know, with MS and obviously, you know, not a neurologist or with, the, with a heavy scientific background. Um, and that's when I was, I was sort of casting around for a new subject and I was thinking about um, MS and shame and this and my sort of reading led me along to what is like to have the experience of illness and that also led me to reading about um, Susan Sontag and in her groundbreaking essay um, you know illness is a metaphor and what's it like to be in the kingdom of the well and be forced to move into the, the kingdom of the sick and I, I think with MS the problem is we have a healthy life then we are diagnosed and we are forced into the kingdom of the sick and we we never get a chance to return to the kingdom of the healthy we, we become a, a forever patient that's quite a that's quite a statement to make a forever, a forever <laughs> patient <clears throat> so i mean i mean having read your kingdom of the sick it makes me realize can a healthcare professional somebody who hasn't got ms ever understand what it's like to have the disease Thing is, I think it's very difficult, and I certainly, before I was diagnosed with MS, had a you know vague, vague idea. But illness or chronic illness was something that happened to somebody else, and it was usually a much older person. Uh, but I think, I think, I think it is something worth thinking about, and what it's like to 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 view a person not just with having MS, um, but as being somebody who will forever be in the system. And I think it is is it's quite a heavy burden for people with MS. Um, but I think you know you do have to come to terms with it. Uh, and I think sometimes with people around us, sometimes it's better just to kind of listen and instead of say, what can we do to help? Maybe offer more like, um, how are you feeling? How are you coping? Because you make that point about. Um... If somebody says to you, "You look so well." How you obviously don't like being told that you look so well. So that's a that's a mistake I make. You know, often patients come into my clinic and they look well, and I and I say that, but I'm obviously um, need to th rethink that uh, statement. You know? Well, I think it's funny whenever you get a bunch of people with MS together, they do they do sort of you know groan about. It. On one hand, look, I I think it's lovely. On one hand, you you know because you make an effort to look well, you don't want to be you know walking around with old shabby clothes and 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 then you try and look um well but so on one hand i do appreciate that but i think it's because of the nature of ms because especially in the beginning stages it is an invisible disease um so people can't see the pain or the fatigue or the um you know bladder incontinence or the vertigo um and so i think they want to be reassuring and saying but you look so well and I, but I think sometimes the people with MS, they think, well, you can't sort of see what's going on. And I think some people, I think for some, it's it's almost a doubt in their voice. Um, but you look so well. C can you actually be, you know, can you actually be ill? Why, why, why are you on this very expensive treatment when you look fine to me? And you also mentioned the, the issue around doubt. Uh, is that self-doubt or doubt in the system? or uh... Doubt. I, I think, I think, and you know, you jump in where where you think. But I think the our perception of illness has certainly changed. And I was looking into a bit of this when I was writing the article. I think illness for so many hundreds of years or thousands of years was accepted with 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 resignation. Uh, it was something that was around, and um, there's very little people could do about it, or, or, uh, or you know, medicine could do about it. And I think we've seen a huge upswing in the last, what would you say, hundred years of being able to treat illness. So you know, you're wiping out illnesses. People are dying um, much older rather than younger, and suddenly. And I think we we see ourselves as 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 a people a progression that things are always get better. So I think there is this idea that of doubt you know what why what how come you're ill you know you're a young fairly healthy looking person why did you get this disease why do you still have it 
um, what you because you look you look fine. Okay, so that's also something that I uh, didn't really appreciate. Uh, well, I, I probably understand it, but I, you know, it's something you don't think about as a healthcare professional uh, looking after somebody with the disease. And you make the point about the loneliness now. Is, is that a, um, despite being embedded in a big family network and having yeah. friends, are you still lonely? Is that something we need to understand? I, I think this is an I do I do mention it and sometimes you know I'm a bit nervous about speaking for everybody else but I think because I've had it nearly 11 years and met a lot of people I I think it is a very lonely illness and I think even though family members and friends you know they try their absolute very best and and I get it um, but I think and this is what I'd say to a person who was newly diagnosed please go out and find others who have MS and I think I resisted at the beginning. Of doing that because I thought well hang on I'll sort this out I'll get on with this on my own but there's a lovely feeling of ease and relaxation when you meet others with MS and um, you just can say whatever you want to say and um, everybody just gets it you don't have to explain and you don't have to educate and also I, I find it also very helpful in terms of finding out information or um, you know sort of font of oh try this or we've had better luck with that so it's not just just a community you, you're finding out a lot so I would say it is a lonely disease please try and, and, and search out others with it. Okay to finish off then so Obviously, I've learned a fortune from reading this, and it's making me think. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> but now it's making me think very, very carefully about, you know, how do we approach people with the disease in, a, in not only in a clinical setting, but you know, in a social setting. And so, the question I would ask you then is, if you were designing a training program for young, say, neurologists or young yeah. nurses who are going to be working with people with multiple sclerosis or any chronic disease. Yeah. You know, what would your overlying message be? And would you be prepared to teach them about uh, the kingdom of the sick, you know, this, this concept? Yeah, no, I think I, it's funny because I think in, in, in the article, just very briefly, I said, um, you know, we do get into the kingdom of the sick. That's not to say that on some days I do feel like I'm in the kingdom of the well. So there is a switching back. Um, but I, but I do think that it, it is very much um, there is transition to be to becoming a patient. I would say to to young neurologists that it's very helpful, and even though I know that there are time limits, to listen and also maybe to suggest that uh, they might you know the, the the person who is newly diagnosed or or uh, within the last couple of years perhaps this is you know a, a very um, they might want to think about seeking some sort of support um, be it through um, groups in the MS Society the MS Trust or online or shift MS and they might find that valuable and that um that there it will that maybe even they might consider something like a counselor or a therapist to help them initially deal with what will be happening because you know it, it, within that first diagnosis i think you find that immediately your world shrinks all the possibilities and the values you held dear suddenly change and i think that takes that's it's quite a lot for somebody to take on and but i do think on the flip side that um, through time you do find your own way and what I found more valuable is that you tend to take everything day by day rather than looking too far into the future and in a way isn't that that's pretty good I think for all of us to look at life that way. Anyway so, so thank you very much Rachel I, I hope the community appreciates what you've done. Oh well uh, thank you. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to urge you to try and get it published uh, uh, in a you know, somewhere else where more people can read it than just on our blog. So Yeah. Okay. Well thank you very much. And thank you very much for all your